This is Optimal Finance Daily, episode 1475. Financial adulting, the top five things to know, and three actions to improve your financial health, both by Harry N. Stout of financialverse.com. And I'm your host and personal finance enthusiast, Diana Merriam. This is a show where I narrate posts from a wide variety of personal finance blogs. We cover so much on this show, from saving to investing to debt reduction and more. So thank you for joining me today and every day. Do you have a question you'd like answered here on the show? Go ahead and send it over to finance at oldpodcast.com and you will hear from me soon. Even if your question isn't answered on a Q&A episode, I do my very best to answer every email. And I actually have two posts today. So let's get right to them and start optimizing your life. Financial adulting the top five things to know by Harry N. Stout of financialverse.com. What is the adulting stage of a person's financial life? What knowledge, skills, and lessons should be learned by the time an individual exits this stage? These are key questions I've gotten in recent interviews. I've also been asked by parents what the top money skills are that they need to teach their kids. This post will address these questions. The adulting stage. In the financial verse, the first stage of a person's financial life is called the adulting stage. This stage takes place from birth to age 30, when young adults, in my view, are finally not their parents' responsibility. I also call this period the journey to 30. During this stage, the individual is educated, has received instruction on the key aspects of financial matters, develops personal relationships such that they find a partner or a friend group they affiliate with, find steady employment, and lastly, but most importantly, the individual is able to fully financially support themselves. To emphasize the last point, this would mean that the parent's bank closes on their 30th birthday unless a major emergency or unexpected need arises. Here are what I believe to be the top five things a person should have learned about money during the adulting stage. Number one, financial knowledge is money power. They need to have developed a habit to spend two hours per week or 17 minutes per day understanding and keeping up to date with the key aspects of the financial verse. This means they read, listen to, or watch media to understand current leading financial indicators, economic developments, key financial terms and concepts, and basic financial math. Much changes in our society as new technologies are introduced and implemented. Adults need to keep informed of these changes. Number two, they must have a budget. Knowing how much cash is coming in and going out is essential to manage a person's financial affairs. I learned early in my career that what is not measured is not managed. You can't navigate your journey if you don't know how you're doing and where you're going. In the financial verse, this is done by understanding and managing the inflow and outflow of cash. Individuals need to think of themselves as financial plumbers. They need to make sure the water pipe flowing cash is used as needed and doesn't have holes and it's not leaking. Number three, an understanding of the impact of debt. Debt can be their friend if people understood how to use and not abuse it. During the adulting stage, an individual must learn the various types of debt, the cost of each type, and when debt should be incurred and when getting into debt must be avoided. Number four, the financial risk they will face in life. There are certain financial risks each person must identify, eliminate, or minimize in their lifetimes. In my books and content, I've identified eight key financial risks that can negatively impact an individual's journey through the financial verse. An individual needs to understand the risks they're facing, such as premature death, health, disability, longevity, and what they can do to deal with each. Number five, what people can help them. As individuals go through the adulting stage, they must learn who they can turn to to solve financial problems. They need to know how to consult bankers, financial planners, insurance professionals, investment professionals, and if necessary, legal resources to get their issues addressed and resolved. They should be taught that contrary to what you often read in the financial press, there are different types of qualified people in the financial verse that can help them get where they need to be. The adulting stage is the time to learn the basics about money, what it can do to impact the quality of life, how the economy works, the importance of financial self-reliance, 
and an appreciation of what money can provide if properly managed. It is up to all parents, teachers, and mentors to provide their offspring and or mentees with a deep and practical knowledge of the basics. It's never too late to learn money basics. This knowledge can change lives for the better. And I have another post for you in just a sec, but first. A big thanks to Pitney Bowes. Ship like a pro with Send Pro Online by Pitney Bowes. This is what we've been using to mail our Optimal Living daily workbooks. SendPro Online is an easy to use solution that will allow you to buy postage and print shipping labels online at the office, at home, or on the go. For as low as $4.99 a month, you'll save up to 40% off USPS priority mail. Plus, for being an Optimal Finance Daily listener, you'll receive a free 30-day trial to get started and a free 10-pound scale to ensure that you never overpay. You can compare and choose the best rates across carriers, schedule package pickups, and track shipments from departure to arrival. Plus, calculate exact postage, print from your PC, and avoid trips to the post office. Go to pb.com slash OFD to access a special offer for a free 30-day trial plus a free 10-pound scale to get started. That's pb.com slash OFD. Ship like a pro. Simplify your shipping and save with a free trial of Send Pro Online from Pitney Bowes. Three Actions to Improve Your Financial Health by Harry N. Stout of financialverse.com. We're all experiencing the impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic in the many facets of our lives, home, family, work, and recreation. For me, at this stage of my life, my kids are all adults and living elsewhere, so it's meant spending dedicated time with my wife. We get along very well, thank goodness. And reaching out to my family and friends using all of today's tools, including home, email, and video conferencing. This quarantine time has also had me working each day to get my 10,000 steps and trying to stay as active as possible. I know this situation will pass and we will move onward to a new reality. One thought that's continued to pop into my brain is that when this horrible situation passes, people will reevaluate their lives, habits, and where they spend their time. Some will want to work from home. Others will long for the office and the contact with people it provides. As part of this reevaluation, I hope people will spend more time on their financial health. As we've seen or personally experienced, this pandemic has brought into the open many of the financial risks that I write about in the financial verse. Over the next few months, I will bring a number of ideas to our readers about what they might do as they reevaluate their relationship with money. Some of you will have survived the pandemic in great financial shape, while others may be struggling to make ends meet because of having lost their job. Here are three key actions you can take to improve your relationship with money post-pandemic. Number one, developing a money mindset. As I've written, the average American spends about two minutes per day managing their money. You have to spend more time than that to properly plan your cash flow, manage your debt, plan for your later years, and effectively manage your spending. The time invested does not have to be substantial, but it needs to be more than two minutes per day. Remember, a mindset is an established set of attitudes held by you about a given subject. If you take time to develop a clear mindset about money, your financial success should improve. Number two, taking time to learn about money. Most of us spend about 10 minutes per day just reading. Not a lot in a world where things change rapidly due to new technologies and continued innovation. To be successful with money, you should look to invest two hours per week on learning about the economy and managing your money. Please read the Spend Two tab of the Financial Verse website for ideas on where to devote time improving your money knowledge. Number three, developing better money habits. Over 70% of people do not have a cash budget. Most Americans have little or no emergency funds or savings for their later years. You need to develop better money habits by putting in place a budget, a savings plan, and better spending habits. The lack of basic money habits has sunk many families as the pandemic has shown. You can't lose weight if you don't know what you're eating that is making you overweight. The same goes with money. If you don't know where the money comes from and where it goes, you will not be able to save and invest more. Summary. I hope that as we emerge from this national nightmare, 
you take the time to improve your financial health. If you do, the next time an unexpected event takes place, you'll be much better able to weather the storm. You just listened to the post titled Financial Adulting, the top five things to know and three actions to improve your financial health, both by Harry N. Stout of financialverse.com. Okay, am I the only person who thinks 30 is too old to finally be financially responsible for yourself? In my humble opinion, once you're out of school, living independently, and hopefully making enough income to support yourself, the bank of mom and dad isn't a viable option. And this isn't just to let parents off the hook. Striving for self-sufficiency as early as possible allows you to live life on your own terms. I also think making money mistakes in your 20s that you have to dig out of can be an incredible learning experience. Everyone's situation is different, so there are no hard, fast rules here. But one of the best parts about being an adult is exploring your own independence. So I think it's worth striving for early. And if you focus on living below your means and start prioritizing saving and investing, you're off to a fantastic start. I totally agree that this pandemic has really put a spotlight on so much when it comes to our finances. Planning for a loss of income is definitely more in our face right now. But I think we also have an opportunity to look at our spending habits and how we're spending our time. With less opportunity to go out and spend money, Did we learn anything about our relationship with consumerism? Did we cut back in ways that are sustainable as things go back to normal? I think this pandemic experience, as awful as it's been, has also invited us to increase our awareness about how we're spending all of our most important resources. I'll leave it there for today. That's a wrap for another Wednesday show. Have a great rest of your day and I'll be back tomorrow where your optimal life awaits.